BS Free Witchcraft is a production of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. Nerd and Tie produces podcasts ranging from actual play to true crime, and you can find more at nerdandtie.com or join our Discord by going to nerdandtie.com slash Discord. Welcome to BS Free Witchcraft, your monthly guide to the modern witchcraft movement, minus a lot of the usual, well, bullshit. I'm your host, Trey Dorn, and uh, it's... It's May, and before we get started, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping here, and that is to mention that in July, uh, I'm doing my annual feedback and Q&A episode, where I take questions from you, the listeners, and I answer them, and I take feedback from you and respond to it. Right? Complicated. I know. Uh, All you have to do to send in a question, a comment, a concern a uh, poem about kettle corn is go to bsfreewitchcraft.com slash contact, fill out the form, and send it in. And remember, when I answer these questions, I do them anonymously. I don't say your name. I try to obscure any identifying information. So uh, they, they are completely anonymous. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you're out open and public about being a witch I will just give you my response, because that's the show. (laughs) Uh, Obviously, uh, if you've looked at the length of the episode this month, we're back to a normal length episode (laughs) this month. It's just me. So uh, what we're talking about, though, is kind of uh, the performative aspect of witchcraft. There's a pressure to present a version of ourselves publicly when it comes to witchcraft and it's it that's just a, a part of life you know it's we're social creatures we have some degree of pressure to conform to what um the the part of society that we've identified into right i mean we want to be seen as the thing that we have declared ourselves. And with that, though, there are some pitfalls. You know, when I launched the show, I, I, I mentioned about like how I wanted to get to the core of witchcraft and not get bound up in just the aesthetic stuff that you find a lot of places. Because, um, again, as I said, aesthetics are fun. I love aesthetics. You know, it's there's a reason why my Book of Shadows is in a small leather-bound book and not a spiral notebook. It's not functional, like, none of that is a functional reason why I've made that choice. It's 100% because I think it looks neat, right? And so when we go on social media, be it Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, um, and you go into, like, the witchcraft circles and witchcraft blogs and witchcraft accounts... the, The first thing you see, though, is always going to be aesthetics. You know, it's... Like, especially with with Instagram and TikTok, these are primarily visual mediums. So you're going to get aesthetics a lot. A lot of it is going to be aesthetics. And importantly, though, a lot of it's going to be, there's going to be some performative aesthetics. There's going to be people dressing a certain way to feel and look witchy. There's going to be a, you know, a... a pressure to kind of present a witchy image in these things. And it's it's funny, like, I've been a witch for 25 years. I'm 40 years old. And when I started out, there was actually, like, a huge push in a lot of witchcraft circles to not look witchy. Like, that we as witches are like everybody else. And... Because the public image for a long time was... There's a stereotype. Um, How do I explain this? Uh, Long-haired women in peasant blouses and skinny white guys with weird beards, long hair, and shirts unbuttoned down to the navel. (laughs) I cannot begin to describe to you... The number of people who kind of fell into this is like, and you know what, man, if that's your jam, go for it, rock it, you know, just wear it with confidence. But in the 90s, because there was like such this association 
with like the new age movement and you know people shoving crystals at you and I mean don't get me wrong I love crystals but you know there's a type uh, like the, the crystal healing people and all of that that witches really wanted to distance themselves from that and so the whole point like in a lot of the PR of the 90s was that oh we're, your neighbor could be a witch and you'd never know that like we're the, the line was always you know it's we're doctors and lawyers and all that stuff like and like this, this promotion of kind of the professional the modern working professional witch and that's changed I mean it was I don't know if it was ever really real but that was like the the PR campaign I mean if you take a look at you know the actual public voices of witchcraft at the time like that doesn't really match up to who they were it's they were way more into the stereotype of you know than than this but but that's obviously changed is uh you know a lot of us have embraced being weird and non-conforming <laughs> to anything but what we find is that then people like as you push against that aesthetic and you, you push you, you try to go weird is that everyone wants to go weird in the same way and it, there's a performative nature to it like it's and part of it's not negative part of it's like i want to signal to other people in my community that i'm a part of this i i am one of you you are my people i am of your people i want you to see that i'm one of you and so it's not all negative but there is a degree where like people if you feel people feel the need like that they are required to do those things to uh, be valid and that's not that's not true it's not true you don't need to dress up and pose in the woods dramatically you don't need to be a skinny white girl in the woods to be a witch i mean you can be one if you are ain't nothing wrong with it it's just that if you don't fit into that particular image you are equally valid all right and because that's that's like that's a lot of what we see in social media and there's And, and some of it's harmless. Like, you know, if if you're, you know, if you just want to be a schlub and don't feel like spending a whole bunch of money on, like, weird clothes, like some of us do because we're weirdos, um, I dress weird. It's just, like, I'm... It's... Okay, so this is a brief aside uh, as I, like, just fall off my script, like... So I currently am as weird as I've probably ever been in my long drape cardigans and my, you know, my long boots and just, just like full on weird. But if you'd seen me 10 years ago, like when I was, my gender identity was deeply in the closet at the time. Um, but so 10 years ago, you would have seen me and I would have looked like, an average person working an office job in, you know, I even had polo shirts. Woof. And khakis and all this stuff. And here's the thing. None of that made me less of a witch. Like, the fact that I blended <laughs> with the general populace did not make me less of a witch. Now I've gone full weird. Uh, <laughs> you work from home long enough and I've been working from home for, you know, over a decade. You just get weirder every single year and become more yourself the more that you're, like, not in front of people. I think uh, I think my wife's the only reason, like, living with my wife is the only reason why I haven't gone completely feral. <laughs> just, there's, there's always another person. Um, but to get back to the actual topic of the show... Um, Besides just, like, the social pressures of, like, presenting this image of our craft, it also is kind of a pressure to take up parts of uh, a practice that you might not otherwise do so. Like, I've been, a, I, I've been a witch for a long time, and it shocks a lot of people to find out that I don't do tarot. That I'm, I'm a witch who doesn't do tarot. I, I technically own a tarot deck. It is sitting in a box in my closet where it, it has been 
for the last several years from the last time I moved. Um, I just never unpacked it and I never used it because while I've gotten tarot readings before, it's just not a thing that I've ever thought to do. Like I like, let me tell you, like the only reason why I know any, what any cards mean is from fricking memes. Okay. Like <laughs> the only reason that I know what the tower is, is from Tumblr. Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know crap about tarot. I've never learned what the cards mean. And, and people are shocked by that, but it's like, that's just, it's not a part of my witchcraft, right? Like, I, I do a lot of spell work, but I don't do that. Likewise, I'm not really a follower of astrology. Like, I don't really, really buy into astrology at all. Uh, to which some people point out, Trey, you're a triple Virgo. Of course you don't. Yeah, that's the, uh, Whenever people, like I say, I don't believe in astrology, and then they find out that like I was born at sunrise on a new moon um, and, and literally all of my signs are Virgo, uh, they, uh, <laughs> they go, oh, that makes sense. I'm like, this is not helping my argument. But, like, so I don't give a crap if Mercury's in retrograde. First off, I know that retrograde is just the apparent motion from the, the apparent backwards motion from our point of view. When Mercury's in retrograde, it's still moving forward. I feel like there's an inspirational mug I could make, like, just based around that. Like, even in retrograde, Mercury still moves forward. I, th I think that's, like, there's a joke there. <laughs> or at least not necessarily a joke. There's, a, there's an inspirational mug there somewhere marketing opportunity maybe i'll get something up on red bubble i don't know it's so like it's not stuff that i do but there's there's this pressure that like because that's what you see people doing like you go into the tumblr tags i'm sure like i'm sure there's 100 percent somebody like offering readings right now on tumblr like in the witchcraft tags it's there's there's always somebody and that's and it's fine if you do that like if that's if that's your bag Go for it. And again, I don't want to make it sound like I'm I'm against people trying out new things or doing tarot. But my point is, is that, like, whether it be tarot, astrology, or anything like that, you shouldn't feel pressured to take it up to make it look more like you're a witch. Right? Like, you're a witch just for doing any kind of magic. Any kind. Even if, if you just do tarot, feel free to call yourself a witch. If you just do, you know, certain things. It's all it takes to be a witch is performing some sort of something that can be considered witchcraft and self-identifying as a witch. That's it. Like, obviously, there are specific forms of witchcraft that have, like, you have to do X to be X. Like, you know, it's uh, a great example is Wicca. It's it's a specific religious tradition. Um, you, you have to believe in the religion to be part of that specific, you know, witchcraft-based religion. Um, but the overall general term of witch is just for anyone who is performing any kind of witchcraft. Um, yeah. And, you know, it can get awkward. Like, you know, people, people can challenge you. You know, it's, they'll be like, oh, you're not a real blah, blah, blah. You get weird gatekeeping over, like trivial weird stuff <laughs> and i swear i'm gonna do a whole episode just purely on this phenomenon but like uh, uh a lot a while ago this is probably last year some point we had a person on on the nerd and tie discord who uh nerd and tie you know is, we're on the nerd and tie podcast network we have a discord it's fun um who mentioned that they had they've been on this other discord where uh, that was like testing people on like their witchcraft experience in really weird ways. And they got challenged because they didn't know uh, specifically the term of sympathetic magic. Now, that's a word. The sympathetic magic is just really any kind of thing where like, you use like thing to influence like thing. Um, hence the term sympathetic. It's... 
the person had like actually like had, had heard of these principles, but they had just never heard that one term. And uh, that they were like deemed like not serious enough of a witch because of that one minor knowledge gap. Um, and it's like, you can read a dozen witchcraft books and not actually end up encountering that term, right? So, I'm not kidding. So, it's like, when we we draw these lines on, like, I don't do X sort of magic, but I do, you know, Y sort of magic, you're still a witch. But people build these kind of standards, and then it's like the idea that, like, this is the minimum, this is beginner thing, this is advanced. Like, a lot of times, that's not necessarily true. It's just a, this is what the person this is what person A started with and then moved on to the second thing and the third thing. And not everyone has to take those things in that order or even do all of the things that the first person did. It's just not required. Like, you know, we just did, you know, I just did an episode on the holidays a couple months back. And the, the, uh, just kind of a basic wheel of the year episode. And so there's this, like, pressure on witches to publicly celebrate the wheel of the year even though that's primarily a wiccan thing and some druids <laughs> like it's i mean four of those holidays are the just season changes based on the astronomical calendar and then the other four are the celtic fire festival so obviously you know but not everybody like if you are a witch who is, like, drawn to Hellenic stuff, who doesn't... Like, why would you need to do the Celtic fire festivals? Why would you need to make them a part of your practice? If you're a witch who primarily draws on Hellenic symbolism and, you know, like, why... You shouldn't... Don't feel pressured into doing it. Like, and especially, like, when you get into, like, secular witchcraft where their witchcraft is independent of any sort of, like, spiritual, religious, um, like, part of parts of their life, you know, be they an atheist, a polytheist, or a Christian, they can all be secular witches. And, like, if you don't need to incorporate, you know, the religious holidays of a certain other group of witches at all, but there's still this, like, kind of social pressure to do it. And that's not great. <laughs> this also can fall into much more insidious ways. And this is... This is the stuff that always, like, gets me kind of... Hmm. So there's a performative aspect to any sort of, like, social media witchcraft. Where people want to talk about their experiences. And they want to sound impressive. And so there's a temptation to exaggerate, exaggerate what's happened to you and what you've done. Like there's a, there's a major temptation to do that. And I see this, well, okay, so I don't know if I see this or not, but let me put it this way. I have had deeply connected spiritual experiences in my life, right? I have had moments of epiphany, that led me down this path in the first place. I have gone through, I have done meditative practices to contact um, my fetch deers, my filga, filger, um, filger is the plural. Uh, and I have had like experiences where I have seen, heard, and felt things that were as real as, as they could be but they weren't physical things in the room. It's like, I've had, I've had those. Now, do I have them every day? No. Do some witches go their whole lives and never have these experiences? Yeah. Like, I can count on two hands the number of times that I've had those experiences and that I've sought them out and they weren't necessarily easy to have. So it's like, when I read, there's this, this one Tumblr post I read literally years ago, 
And so, but so when I read someone talking about an experience where they like sat down and talked to the God and the, the, that God was sitting on the edge of their bed with them but, and like having this whole thing. And like, I read this experience and I'm like, that could have, it could have happened. I don't know how much I buy it, but it could have like, and I don't want to like, like maybe this person really did have this experience, right? Because, and I've had, you know, equally affecting experiences, um, not with a deity, but you know, I get, I get how they got down that road, but when people read those, that like, then there's this this pressure that like I need to have that kind of experience. Uh, it's, you know, I think of um, a friend of mine, uh, grew up in a really uh, Christian community in kind of like a very extremist church, and there was this thing where uh, where people literally talked in tongues, and growing up. He, he would hear other people talking, and he never was having that experience, never having it at all. And so he faked it. He faked it to fit in. It would turn out later that a lot of other people were faking it to fit in because they thought they were the only one. And so I think about that. Like, I think about the fact that, like, while it is true, an in-depth spiritual experience like that is possible, right? It's also entirely possible that the person who wrote that was writing something and trying to express something to try to feel like they belonged in the community because they saw that other people were having these experiences. And first off, like I don't I don't blame anyone for like exaggerating in a moment of insecurity. And also, it's entirely possible that you've had these experiences. But the important thing, the important thing in my point, is that it's perfectly fine if you haven't. It's perfectly fine if you've never experienced anything like that before. You know, a lot of books from the 90s focus a lot on, like, visualization and magic and, like, will write their spells all about that stuff. And I know some people specifically who have a problem with that. Like, it's, it's an issue where that sort of visualization is difficult to them. And it's hard because, like, if everything you're seeing is saying, like, you know, do things this way and you can't... Um, you know, I've often, like, I've seen people ask on Tumblr and, and like, conversations that's like, oh, well, well, what do I do? Like, how can I do this better? And my my response is always like, well, have, have you tried casting the same spell in a way that doesn't make you do it that way? Like, there are, there are many paths through town. Like, if you're navigating from your home to the grocery store, there, if I was going to the grocery store, there are, like, multiple ways that I can get there. I can go take the uh, Highway 12 most of the way, but that's got a higher speed limit. And if I was riding, and I can take it though because I am have a car, but if I only had a moped, well, heck, I can take the side roads and I'd get there still. Probably spend less money on gas. It might take more time, but I'd spend less money on gas. If anything, it's a it's a neutral difference between the two. So that's that's my thought. Don't feel pressured to do things in a way that you're not comfortable with. Don't feel pressured that if you don't do it that certain way, you're not a real witch. You are a real witch. You're doing witchcraft. You're just as weird as the rest of us. <laughs> and and that's really that's that's my point. You know, none of this is easy. <laughs> and it's okay if, like, you don't ever feel like you're not measuring up to anything or to anyone because the whole reason why you're doing witchcraft is for you, right? Like, no one's grading you no one is you know the only person who determines whether or not you're a witch or anything you're doing is you 
you're in charge of you. And don't feel like you need to do or like or work a certain way to fit in with the larger witchcraft community. It's the only important part is that the witchcraft that you practice is fulfilling to you as a person and that you feel the connection with what you're doing. And if you don't feel that connection, it's okay to stop doing things that way. It's okay to not. It's okay to find a different way or just take a break altogether. Nobody is watching. <laughs> like, seriously, it's okay. If what you're doing doesn't make you happy, if what you're doing isn't fulfilling in any way, then it's not what you're supposed to be doing. It's okay to stop. You're not letting anybody down. You shouldn't even be letting yourself down. And when you find what you need, that's when you'll find what you need. Don't get locked up in performance. Don't lose yourself there. I guess. I don't know. I'm not good at being serious for too long. All right. Uh, <laughs> but either way, I support you, and I think you're great. So just as long as you're not hurting anyone, your witchcraft is awesome. Unless you need to curse someone, and then I'm still behind you. It's just, you know, we're going to... That's a different topic. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening to this month's episode of BS Free Witchcraft. Remember, this show is only made possible because of contributions from listeners like you um, through Patreon. And you can, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. And uh, it, for even just a dollar a month, you get episodes like this a whole week earlier. You can, you can just, you know, get me in your inbox before everybody else and... People who support me at the $10 level get a shout-out. This month's shout-outs are Stephanie Graves, Mary Stowell, Lindsay Dosey, and Bruce Norville. And if you can't afford to support the show, because you know what? I get you know, I get it. The economy's not super awesome. We're in a pandemic. Just share the show with everybody you have. Uh, write a review on uh, different podcasting platforms like uh, Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Um, any other systems that you're using, if they allow you to do that do that. That really does help the show a lot in algorithms. Um, so th this show has a YouTube page. I don't mention it a lot. Um, I've finally gotten back to uploading stuff like regularly. So most of the catalog of the show, I think except for like two episodes and those will be up in the next couple of months are like the whole back catalogs up on the, the, the YouTube channel. So you can subscribe to that and you can find links to all the subscription options and all of that stuff on uh, bsforwitchcraft.com. Remember, we have the, the feedback episode coming up in July. So please, please, please send me your questions and uh, feedback so I can, you know, it's not much of a Q&A and feedback episode if there isn't any, aren't any questions or feedback. Yeah, so uh, if you ask a question, go to bs3witchcraft.com slash contact. Remember, we are a part of the Nerd and Tie Network and the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. First off, we have a Discord. You can find an invite at nerdandtie.com slash Discord. And you can talk to people like me and uh, Hex Positive's host, Brina Garen. It's also there, like pretty much all the hosts of all of our shows here. Um, if you want to hear more me, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, I, I do a bunch of more shows besides this. Um, one of which is The Meat Grinder, which is a limited nine-episode series. Uh, it's an actual play show that I GM. Um, it's set in the same world as the Stormwood and Associates actual play show. And it is uh, a, a group of covert operatives are infiltrating, are like going into a mountain town that has effectively has a small zombie apocalypse happening. It's a, it's called the meat grinder because characters die a lot. It's uh, there's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, like the players went in knowing that the goal was to kill their characters and, 
There are, there are five players, uh, three of which are at the table at any one time. Every time a player dies, they rotate in uh, who's playing. Um, I GM that. It's it's really fun. I think six of the episodes are out right now of the nine. Uh, they come out the 15th of every month. And they're, it, it's just, it's a fun show. Um, and you should check it out at nerdtech.com slash meatgrinder. And uh, yeah, with... With that, uh, remember you can follow the show on social media. You can follow this show here, me, Trey, on social media. I'm on Twitter at twitter.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. I am on Tumblr at T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N dot Tumblr dot com. And you can follow the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash BS Free Witchcraft. Those are the approved happy public ways to follow me, guys. Please don't send me a friend request. Nah, nah. All right. Um... I love you all, though, and uh, with that, Majikins, I will leave you off until next month. Uh, have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good morning. Have whatever time of thing it is right now, and I'll talk to you guys next month. <laughs>